Welcome to the QuickTrain Modeler video training series. This module will show you how easy it is to integrate imagery with your LiDAR data in QuickTrain Modeler. You'll learn how to create powerful 3D visualizations and also how to fuse the spectral information from your imagery with your LiDAR point cloud data. QuickTrain Modeler supports a wide range of image formats, including ECW, GeoTIFF, Mr. Sid, ODAS Imagine, and NITF. I'll begin by importing some LiDAR data into QuickTrain Modeler. I'm going to click on the Import Model Data button, and I'm going to import two LAS tiles into the QTA model format. Clicking on the Import button launches the Import Data dialog, and I'm going to shift-click to select two LAS tiles. Clicking Open launches the LAS Import window. Under Processing Options, I'm going to click the radio button Process as Group. This ensures that QuickTrain Modeler treats these two separate LAS tiles as a single and seamless model. Scrolling down to the bottom of the LAS Import window, in the LAS Header Data section we see that the coordinate system information for these LAS datasets has been defined. If your LiDAR datasets do not have a defined coordinate system, it's a good idea to specify that at the bottom of the LAS Import window. This is particularly important if you plan on taking advantage of QuickTrain Modeler's reproject on the fly capabilities when overlaying your image datasets. Once QuickTrain Modeler has finished importing the LAS data to point cloud format, I'm going to click on the Save Models button. Saving my LiDAR data as a model will ensure that I have quick access to it in the future. Simply type a name for your model and click Save. Within QuickTrain Modeler, image overlays are treated as textures. Under the Textures menu, Overlay Texture, you see that three types of image textures or image overlays are supported. Orthographic, Orthorectified, and Projective. Please consult the QuickTrain Modeler help for more detailed explanations. In most cases, you'll be working with Orthorectified overlays. There's a quick launch button on the toolbar, Overlay Orthorectified Texture. In the Import Orthorectified Texture window, the first settings are the crop options. No cropping loads the full image dataset. Crop to Model Extents will clip the image dataset down to your LiDAR model. And Crop to Extents of Current View will clip the image dataset down to your current view extent. It's generally wise to stick with the default Crop to Model Extents. Under Select Image, you can click on the Select Image button to locate and load your image dataset manually or you can take advantage of QuickTrain Modeler's powerful image search capabilities by clicking on the Find Image button. Select either the directory or parent directory containing your image datasets. Then choose a Search option. I'm going to choose Any Matching in this case. Any Matching will comb the directory and find any image datasets of any coordinate system that intersect my LiDAR model. Clicking on the Find Image button will start the search process. In a matter of seconds, QuickTrain Modeler has located two image tiles out of over 200 in that directory that intersect my LiDAR model. Although more than one image dataset can be loaded into QuickTrain Modeler session at any one time, each image dataset has to be loaded individually. I'm going to select my first image dataset, click Load Image, and then click OK in the Import with the Rectified Texture window. By turning off the toggle height coloration, we can see that texture. The texture can be toggled on and off by clicking on the Toggle Loaded Textures button. Now I'll repeat the process to load in the second image tile. You'll notice in the Import Author Rectified Textures window in the lower left there's a checkbox for Smart Contrast Enhancement. This is very valuable, particularly if you're working with image datasets where there is no histogram stretch. To avoid repeating this overlay texture process in the future, I can save all of my overlaid textures as a tile set. Under the File menu, choose Save Tile Set. Enter a name for your tile set and click Save. To illustrate the power of tile sets, under the Textures menu, I'm going to go to Remove Textures. I'm going to select all and click apply to remove those textures. Now under the file menu, I'm going to choose load tile set. I'm going to select the tile set that I saved before 
and click Open. A tile set is essentially nothing more than a shortcut link to any image tiles you had imported as a texture. By saving both of my overlaid textures as a tile set, I was able to import them in one step by loading the tile set as opposed to having to go through the import ortho rectified texture process. Let's zoom into our LiDAR point cloud here and have a look. And we can see the Quick Train model has done an excellent job draping those ortho rectified textures on top of my LiDAR point cloud, giving me a photorealistic representation of the landscape. Quick Train Modeler provides a functionality to permanently make the color information from the image data set part of the LiDAR point cloud. To illustrate this process, let's perform a point query by holding down the Shift key and clicking on a LiDAR point. This brings up the point query window. Over on the left, you see we have X, Y, and Z information, but no RGB, essentially no color information associated with this LiDAR point. To pass through the color information from the image datasets to the point cloud, under the Analysis menu, choose Analysis Tools Vertex Colors, and choose Sample Active Textures into Vertex Colors. Now let's repeat the query by holding down the Shift key and selecting a LiDAR point. In the Point Query window, we see that the R, G, and B values from the imagery have now been passed over to the LiDAR point cloud. Because the RGB values are now included in the LiDAR point cloud, I don't have a need for the texture data. Under the Texture menu, I'm going to choose to remove the textures. Instead of using the toggle loaded textures to turn on and off the color information, it's accomplished by using the vertex colors. Having the RGB information from your image data set stored as part of the vertex colors makes it easier for you to share models with other users. I'm now going to save this model. And I could provide this model to another user who is perhaps using the freely available Quick Terrain Reader, and they could generate the same photorealistic 3D representation. Another way of sharing this colorized LiDAR point cloud is to export it to LAS 1.2 format. LAS version 1.1 and earlier do not support RGB values as part of the point cloud. Under the Export menu, choose Export Models. In the Export Model window, choose LAS Format 1.2 and click Export. Simply provide your LAS file with a name and click Save. I'm going to remove the model from this session by clicking on the Clear Models button and click on Open Models to reload the saved model that has the RGB values stored in the point cloud. Now let's zoom into the model and perform a point query. We see that the RGB values are indeed present, thus demonstrating that I can take this model, share it with any colleagues using either Quick Train Modeler or the freely available Quick Train Reader, and they'll have access to the exact same data set. If the image data set that you've overlaid as a texture does not line up precisely with your point cloud, you can adjust the image registration information. Under the Textures menu, choose Edit Textures, Ortho Rectified. In the Edit Ortho Rectified Texture window, you can see that the registration information can be adjusted. This includes the position for the northing and the easting, along with the projection width and height. Imagery can be draped over a surface using the exact same workflow used to drape imagery over a point cloud. So let's import some LAS data this time into a surface model. Once the surface model import is completed, I can use the exact same steps to drape imagery over the surface model. Clicking on the Overlay Ortho Rectified Texture button launches the Import Ortho Rectified Texture window. I'll find the image, select it, and click Load. Regardless of whether you're draping imagery over a point cloud or a surface, Quick Train Modeler may downsample the data in order to fit the texture into your OpenGL slot. In the Import Ortho Rectified Texture window, 
The sampling rate indicates how much the image has been downsampled by, in this case a factor of 2. If you are draping imagery over a point cloud, the resolution of your imagery will also be influenced by the density of points. If you have very high resolution imagery and a very low point density, the resolution of your imagery will be degraded, and thus a surface model might provide a better visualization environment. Downsampling can be avoided by selecting an alternate cropping method. So let's remove this texture. I'll go to the Import Ortho Rectify Texture window again, and this time, instead of Crop to Model Extents, I'll crop to the extents of the current view. I'll select the same image I did before and load it. Because Quick Train Modeler has cropped the image to the current view extent, the texture is much smaller, and thus is not exceeding my OpenGL texture slot unless you can see the sampling rate is 1, indicating that the imagery is being loaded at full resolution. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please visit the Applied Imagery website for additional QT Modeler training videos.